Well, good evening, everyone. Good evening, good evening, good evening to each of you. Uh, welcome to the Our Power Bible Study of New Life International Ministries uh, right here in Macon, Georgia, 1985 Vineville Avenue, um, just up past Fountain Car Wash uh, in the Old Scottish Rite Building uh, here in Macon. I'm the pastor overseer, Eric Bell. And we're just excited to be back on tonight for another Bible study. I hope and pray that you all are having a good week. Uh, this is our midweek fueling center. <laughs> That's what I like to call it. Uh, greetings, Intercessor McKellar. Good to see you on. Thank God for you. Uh, everyone that's tuning in, we thank God for you all. Really do. Hey, Sister Shonda, good to see you. Elder Wood, all right, good to see you all coming in tonight. All right, uh, so we're just excited about um, what the Lord is doing. Hey, Darlene, how you doing? Good to see you on tonight. Um, what the Lord is doing at this appointed time, this appointed season. Uh, so again, we're just, hey, Sister Pat, good evening to you. Uh, so again, uh, Elder Pat, good evening. All right, Sister Benjo, good evening, good evening. Good to see you all on this evening. Uh, at this appointed time, so, so again, we're just... Uh, just excited. I want to invite you to come on out um, to be with us. This, if you know, if you're not busy, um, you're ready for church. You're you're ready for uh, corporate worship. Hey, cuz sister Natalie, how you doing? Thank you for tuning in. Good to see you. Um, come on out and be with us. Service starts at ten fifteen. Um, then we go live at ten thirty. Of course, we are observing. All of the CDC guidelines as far as social distancing, mandatory masks. Uh, good evening, Sister Pam. Hey, fam. Um, hand sanitizing stations, of course. And then we um, are doing the temperature scans. I encourage everyone, you know, if you, you know, um, for the vaccination, um, be glad when it's open for everyone so we can get the vaccination. So, um, but do come on out, be with us. Hey, um, before we get started, we've got about three more minutes, like some more of our New Life family friends to come in. Um, February 19th and 20th um, is the Apostolic Encounter. And I want to encourage you all, I want to encourage you all to go to Eventbrite. Go to Eventbrite, type in the Apostolic Encounter, the Apostolic, T-H-E-A-P-O-S-T-O-L-I-C, Encounter, E-N-C-O-U-N-T-E-R, the Apostolic Encounter, and register for $25. Our facilitator is going to be none other than Bishop Andy Luter. Man, I'm telling you, he is a theologian that's going to bless, I'm telling you, the topics of discussion we're going to be talking about, he's going to be talking about um, the history of the church, um, apostolic succession, uh, the importance of kingdom uh, kingdom legitimacy, legitimacy in the kingdom, sorry, legitimacy in the kingdom. And uh, we're going to be talking about the importance of apostolic covering. So it's going to be great. He's going to expound and give some great knowledge. I want to encourage you all to go in. Uh, it, it should be coming up there on the screen as well. Uh, you'll see it there on the screen, Eventbrite. Uh, go to Eventbrite. There it is. Uh, you should see it there. You'll see it. You can you just go to that link. And register is twenty five dollars for both days total. This twenty five dollars. I promise you, it's gonna bless you real good. It's gonna bless you real good. Hey, y'all, do me a favor. Go ahead and um, start your watch parties. Go ahead and start your watch parties and tag some family and friends. Um, Cause there's another word from the Lord tonight. Another teaching word. So uh, start your watch parties and go ahead and tag your uh, family and friends. I promise you, the word is gonna bless you real good. It's gonna bless you. It's going to bless you, so go ahead and uh, start your watch parties now. Uh, tag your family and friends. Um, let's get out. Let's get everyone in tonight. Uh, it's going to be, I'm telling you, it's uh, uh, going to be another blessed Bible study. I've uh, really been uh, petitioning God and laying before God on the line, and the Lord has spoken in so many different uh, ways. And so uh, um, we're, we're just ready to release this. We've got about one more minute, and then we're going we're gonna to go. So go ahead. Uh, start your watch parties now. Uh, start your watch party. Invite your family and friends to to, to join the I Home Power Bible Study. Then I am I am the pastor, overseer Eric Bell, and, and again, this New Life International Ministries. Uh, address is nineteen eighty five Vineville Avenue. We are uh, just up past Fountain Car Wash. 
um, right across from the Goodwill in the uh, old Scottish Rite building. So uh, I encourage y'all to come, come check us out. I, I think that you would enjoy the new life experience. Our uh, service starts at 1015 a.m. And then we go back live uh, from this our ch church Facebook page. Um, we'll be back live on this particular uh, Facebook page at 1030. So, so I want you to check us out. I think that you're going to enjoy it. Well, um, again, we're just thankful uh, for each of you. And we're excited uh, to release this word uh, tonight. Uh, I think it's going to bless you real, real good. I, I, I always get a joy to seeing you all online uh, uh, for to the word and um, and to be able to expand and expound upon the word that the Lord has given me for such a time as this. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and get started. Now, you know, I always open up. Uh, we, The Lord has, been, has had us. We are in uh, 2021 now. Um, he's been talking all of 2020, talking about revival and all of that kind of good stuff. And, and, and he's been kind of, uh, strategizing us in our Bible study. has been very strategic in the words that he's been releasing. Uh, the words that he's been releasing has been very strategic. Um, and, and so, uh, uh, so I'm just celebrating, uh, what, God, how God is doing it. As he said that as the body, all of us, that, um, he's catapulting us. We talk about We've been talking about rapid progression and moving forward, uh, how he's moving us fast and, 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 and how he's catapulting us and, and taking us at a rapid speed uh, faster than we've ever been uh, 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 in the body, in, in spirit realm, and how he's taking us into different realms so quickly. And a lot of times before we can get adjusted to a particular place, he's already shifted us and taken us to another place. So he's taking us just that fast. Uh, and in doing so, there are several things that um, that he's uh, kind of been talking to us about. For instance, our identity, uh, uh, coming into the understanding of who we are, finding out who we are based upon God, based upon what he said, not what we have become um, through our life and answering the call of, of to, the, to the names and all of that, the things that we have become through all of our different experiences in life. And so God is just like, you know, uh, I, I, I want you to spend time with me so, so that you would know who you really are, your real true identity. And then, of course, from there, we went to as we're coming into our true identity, you talked about heritage and understanding what heritage you have. I mean, so this is this is some great stuff. Uh, last week, we talked about intensity. Um the Lord just is gave gave such revelation about intensity, how uh, how the intensity how uh, it's building up and, and all of that. And so tonight, man, He has spoken again. Tonight, He's taken us from intensity, and and, and He said, "Now I need for y'all to get this." Tonight, we're talking about magnification. Magnification. I'm like, really? He said, yeah. Matter of fact, you got to understand that as I'm taking us, as we're going through rapid progression, we've been catapulted. He said that I'm magnifying you. Uh, you magnification. Uh, 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 I'm, 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 I'm making you big. <laughs> and, and, and so we got to understand that. We got to understand um, what the Lord is doing and why we're experiencing certain things and, and at this particular time, because the Lord said magnification. Magnification. So now let's look at this tonight. Let's look at this. Let's look at the definition. Let's look at the definition of magnification. Hey, listen, you all need to tag somebody. You need to uh, get your family and friends in here. Tag some new life members. Let's get them in here because there's a word. Magnification. Let's look at the definition of magnification. Here it is. Check this out. Now, here it is. As the Lord say, we are in a place of magnification. Magnification. The process of Enlarging the size of something as an optical image. Did y'all hear that? The process. That means it's going step by step. It's going step by step. It's not just boom. It's, it's going step. And it's, the steps are very fast because we're in rapid. Uh, we're being catapulted. So he said the process, death by definition, magnification means the process 
of enlarging the size of something as an optical image. The act, now catch this, this is another part of, the, of this definition. The act of expanding, the act of expanding, and when something is uh, uh, being expanded, it's being stretched. It's being pulled, it's being stretched, uh, and, and, and it creates a tension. It creates tension because it's being stretched. He said the act magnification, the act of expanding, the act of increasing something, expanding, increasing something in size or volume or quantity or scope. Did y'all hear that? He said that's the act of expanding. I'm stretching you. I'm stretching you so hard. I'm stretching you so far. I'm stretching you in such a way that it is not comfortable. It is tense. It's tense. It's tension. He said, because I am expanding you. The act of increasing, increase. You know, we always say, God, I want to increase. He said, well, this is the part of the magnification process. Your increase is tied in to the magnification process. The act of increasing something in size, volume, which means capacity, quantity. Now, that's interesting. Quantity um, means God said, I'm magnifying your quantity. So now let's look at that. Let's look at it. God said, I'm magnifying your quantity. That means you're pouring out. That uh, uh, you're pouring out. You're pouring out your quantity. Where you've been feeling empty, he said, I'm refilling you. We're in a process of refilling to pour out. Notice he said in his word, out of your belly, shall flow rivers of living water. Now, here's the thing. If it's flowing out of you, something has got to go back in you. Because what has happened, we've been pouring out so much to the point to which the intake has not been matching the output. It has been draining and all of that kind of stuff. So the Lord said, this is why, watch this, uh, 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 I'm, I'm increasing um, the quantity. I'm increasing, I'm pouring into you. Because the quantity, quantity is very important. He said that you, uh, uh, because you are, are in rapid motion, because you're in rapid motion, that means we talked about impact. You're impacting many different things in many different parameters. So you got to understand the importance of quantity. Quantity. Now you got to be mindful of that. Uh, because it's, as we're talking about quantity, we got to make sure that we have quality. We just don't want quantity. We got to make sure that we have not just quantity, but quality. Are you hearing me? So that's important. That's very important. And so this is the actual definition of magnification. As what the Lord said, um, uh, you're being magnified. Um, uh, you're going through the process of magnification. So now, here are the revelatory niggas. I love this. This is, this is about to get real good. As God said, we're in, we're in the process of magnification. Watch this. Your magnification is God's glorification. God, did y'all hear me? Did y'all hear me? God say, me magnifying you is bringing glory to me. So that's why we got to understand it's not about us. It's not about us. God said, me, I'm mag me magnifying you, your magnification, your intensity, your increase, your in volume and quantity of enlarging in size is bringing me glory. Why? Because there are some people that have counted you out. There are some people that say you weren't going to make it. There are some people that say that you weren't going to come through that, that you were, you would never be this or you would never be that. And God said, watch this. In this magnification, I'm causing them to see you. I'm making the very ones that say you weren't that you are. 
God, did y'all hear that? Feel my anointing. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The very ones that say that you weren't, that God said, I'm showing them that you are. So your magnification is bringing God his glorification. Are you hearing me? Your magnification is God's glorification. God, I wish y'all would get that. Oh my God, I wish you all would get the, 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 the weight of that. Your magnification is God's glorification. God said, I'm getting glory out of this. I'm getting glory out of your process. Yes, it's stretching you, but I'm getting glory out of it because the stretching is doing nothing but magnifying you. It's bringing you through the process of magnification. When God say, I'm getting glory out of it, that means it's making him look good. <laughs> Are you hearing me? So your magnification is God's glorification. Now, here's something else. Now, now, uh, now as, as God is uh, people of God, here it is. As he's, he's, he's magnifying us, he said, we're going through magnification, his magnification, not man, his magnification, God's magnification. Now, here's the thing. He said this, let others see your magnification, but not yourself. Stay humble. The worst thing that we can do in, in where we're going now is we're being expanded, we're, we're enlarging, we're doing, we're not flowing in the anointing, we're, we're getting, we're, God is positioning us on, on different platforms, all of those different things. He said this, let others see your magnification and not yourself. There was a book uh, I read years ago by Bishop T.D. Jates called, Can You Stand to Be Blessed? Can You Stand to Be Blessed? In that book, it talks about how there is a, a, a spirit that travels with the blessings of God. There's a spirit that goes directly in a line with the blessings of God. And if you're not careful, watch this. If you're not careful, you'll be overtaken by that spirit and you'll become somewhat cocky and airy and arrogance and all of that kind of stuff and start thinking it's about you. We'll get them in. Look at me. Look at me now. Look at me now. And God's saying no. He said, let others see your magnification, but not yourself. I don't want you to see your own magnification. I don't want you to, to, to see that or else you'll come, you'll become an agent of the devil. Why? Lucifer saw his own magnification and you notice what happened with Lucifer. He started seeing himself. He started seeing how beautiful he was. He started seeing how awesome he was and it got him kicked out of heaven. He was removed from his place of glory. God, are you hearing me? Because God had created Lucifer and put him in a place of glory. God strategically put him in a place of glory and adorned him. God adorned him with all of the rubies and all of, as a matter of fact, God labeled him as the angel of mourning, the beautiful angel. He was a beautiful angel, cherubim. He was beautiful and God created him and gave him all of the splendor and gave him all of that beauty. But what happened in the magnification, he started seeing himself. And watch this. Now, here's the danger of that. He pulled one third of heaven. He pulled. Now, listen at this. I want y'all to get this. I want y'all to get the, the what can happen if you start seeing your own magnification. The very angels that God created, they were up there with God. They were seeing God. They were in his presence every day. 24 hours a day, they were in the presence of God. They were in the presence of God. They were in heaven. They weren't in a, 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 a different place. They were up at the throne. Look how powerful this is. They were at the throne. They were there. Lucifer was able to pull one third of heaven from heaven. The very things that God created. For his glory, Lucifer was able to pull one third of heaven. So this is why it is so important that he said this. 
Let others see your magnification, but not yourself. That's why it's so important. Let others see you being elevated, but you got to stay humble. Let others see you being blessed, but you got to stay humble. Because mm, Thank you, Holy Ghost. Because the Lord just spoke to me and said this. The Lord give it and the Lord take it away. He said, if you don't stay humble, if you start seeing your own magnification, I'll snatch it out from under you. And what was a blessing, oh God, will become a curse. Oh God, what was once a blessing will become a curse. Oh God, so you got to stay humble. We have to stay humble. We got to, God said, I don't want you to see your own magnification. I don't want you to see, start seeing your own, how I'm blessing you. I don't want you to see, I want others to see it. I want others to see my glory on you. I don't want you to see my glory on you. Oh God, are y'all hearing me? Are you hearing me? He said, I don't want you to see your own glory because then you become an agent of Lucifer. God, are you hearing me? You become an agent of Lucifer. Huh. The only thing, what happened? Oh God, I hear you. Watch this. Let me show you how powerful this thing was. The only thing Lucifer would hear, the only thing Lucifer would hear were those angels who would pump him who would pump his magnification. He actually, Lucifer was given an opportunity by God. Are you hearing me? He was giving him an opportunity. Lucifer, God didn't just immediately kick Lucifer out. He didn't. He was giving him an opportunity. Lucifer, don't let this happen to you. Don't let them keep pumping your head. Don't let them just pour into you. I want to tell somebody here. Oh God, I feel this in the anointing. I feel this. God say, don't allow people to pump your head where you start seeing your own magnification. I don't want you to see it. God does not want you to see it. He wants others to see it. And he wants us. Mm. God he just told me this. Oh, God. He said, that's the reason. Oh, I will continue to allow you to be in warfare. God, because warfare keeps you humble. When you're not fighting, it keeps you humble. When you're not fighting, you get lax. Oh God, you hear me? You become comfortable. So the Lord says, some warfare I'm not going to remove. Some warfare I'm going to leave for you to keep fighting. Because when you fight, you stay before me. When you fight, you stay in my presence. When you're in warfare, you it gives you, you know it's too big for you. You know it's too much for you. So God said, I'm some warfare. I'm going to leave right there. Because if I took the warfare from you, uh, you would get arrogant. You'll stop seeking him. So God said, that's why Paul said that was a thorn that was left in his flesh. Whatever that thorn was. He prayed, God, take it away from me. God, take this thorn, this thorn away from me. It's about to drive me crazy. And all three times, the Holy Spirit spoke. Jesus spoke and said, no, I'm not going to take it away from you. I've got to have an agent to keep buffering you, to keep you in a place where you don't start seeing your own self. But what will happen is my grace is sufficient for you. My grace is sufficient for for your weakness. Are you hearing me? Now that doesn't mean that we don't continue to strive and grow in that area. That doesn't mean that we just get stuck in that particular area. No, 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 no. God said my grace, my grace would, will, my grace will, because it's a, oh God, it is a symbolic reference of the love that I have for you. God, are you hearing me? He said, so some warfare, God, I'm not going to take away from you because if I did, you would get Comfortable. He said, I can't catapult you with comfortability. Are you hearing me? He, he said, so let others see your magnification, not you. Here's another one. Oh, God. Magnification, God, are you hear me? Magnification is positioning you in places you wouldn't normally qualify for. God Almighty, are you hearing me? Oh man, you didn't get this by your own. 
You don't qualify. You don't meet. You don't fit the description, God. You don't have really what it takes to do it, God. But he said, because I'm magnifying you. Magnification is positioning you in places that you wouldn't normally qualify for. God, are you hearing it? You don't qualify. I don't qualify. None of us qualify. We don't qualify. We don't qualify for that job. We don't even have the educational experience. Are you hearing me? But God said, watch this, magnification is positioning us in places that we wouldn't normally qualify for. That loan, you don't, you know you don't qualify for it. You got so much debt. But God said, because, oh God, I feel the anointing. Because I'm magnifying you, I feel you. Because I'm magnifying you. Because you're going through the process of magnification. And remember, this magnification is God's glorification. Are you hearing me? So God said, watch this. I'm getting glory for, watch this, allowing you to be chosen over people that are more qualified. God. <laughs> and it's messing a whole lot of folks up because they see you and they see who you were. God, they, they know who you were. They know who you were. They know uh, the old you. They know you. And, and it's messing their heads up because they try this scratch and it's trying to figure out how, how is this person here? They are not supposed to be here. But God say, uh, I'm getting glow. I'm sitting back in heaven getting glory out of your ma magnification. God, are you hearing me? Are y'all hearing me tonight? God say, I'm getting glow. Your magnification is my glorification. And watch this, God, he just said this to me, God. Oh, God. He said, can't nobody remove you from a place that I put you. Are you hearing me? Oh, God. He said, that's why you got to stay humble. He said, because can't nobody, I don't care how much they hate on you. I'm, I don't care how much they're saying you don't qualify for the job. Guess what? They can say all day you don't qualify. But guess what? They can't move you. They can't touch you. Because God said, who am I have in my hand? No man can pluck it out. Are y'all hearing me? Oh, God. And God said, why they're scheming and trying to get you removed? I don't know who I'm talking to. I, I'm stepping over into prophetic. And I don't know who I'm uh, talking to. But they're scheming to try to get you out. But guess what? Guess what, baby? They cannot get you out because God put you there. God Almighty, I feel the anointing. Mm -hmm. Yes, God. I hear you. I hear you, Holy Ghost. He said, and I'm getting glory by sitting there watching them plot and strategize how to get you out and they can't touch you. He said, I'm getting, I'm sitting there with my arms folded like this and I'm like, yeah, uh-huh, I'm getting glory out of this. But you, what you got to do, so why, oh God, so why God leaves the warfare, uh, so why God leaves the warfare, uh, why you are in warfare, God getting glory. While you're battling, while you're fasting, while you're laying before God, while you're in warfare, God said, I, I'm the one that's allowing the warfare. I'm the one that's allowing the warfare to keep you humble. Watch this. So as you are battling, I'm getting glory. God. So look at the twofold going on. You fighting, God getting glory. You're fighting, God getting glory. You're fighting, God getting glory. So guess what? Because, because he said, if I stop the fight, you'll start seeing yourself in the position. And I don't want you to see yourself in the position. Because if you see yourself in the position, you can likely tap over and become an agent of Lucifer. God Almighty. Are y'all hearing me? Are y'all hearing me? Help us, Holy Ghost. I feel the anointing. Oh, God. So, <clears throat> magnification is positioning you in places you wouldn't normally qualify for. Here's the next one. God. Magnification positions you to help position others in places they wouldn't normally qualify for. Oh God, because you are being magnified by the Lord. He said, I'm positioning you to help position somebody else that they wouldn't normally qualify for. God. I said, God, are you serious? He said, yeah. 
He said, I'm magnifying you so that you, based upon your magnification, based upon how I'm magnifying you, I'm positioning you to help somebody else get in a place they normally wouldn't qualify for. So watch this. So that he can get the glory in that. <laughs> He told me, he said, oh, son, listen, I'm not just giving you this magnification for you, for me just to magnify you. I'm giving it to you to help somebody else. God, to help somebody else, to bring them up, to pull them up and, and put, oh God, your magnification will put people in places that they don't even qualify for. And they'll be scratching their heads. Talking about, uh, uh, how did that happen? It's because somebody else's magnification brought you into that place. And now your magnification. <laughs> Are y'all hearing me? Are y'all hearing me? Oh God, I hear you. Are y'all hearing me? And you can't ever, that's why I say you can't get, you, you got to stay humble. Because you'll start, say, Lucifer thought he did that on his own. No, Lucifer, I got you here. Lucifer started thinking it was about him, that it was about his doing. God said, no, 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 no. Because when that happens, a prideful spirit and a halted look, guess what? It was, that's the, on the way down, God said, I'll snatch everything away from you. I'll take it all back. Mm, God, are you hearing me? I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know who am I talking to. Uh, I don't know who am I talking to. We got to remain humble. You got to remain humble. He said, your magnification, thank you, Holy Ghost, positions you to help position others in places they wouldn't normally qualify for. They wouldn't normally qualify, but because of your magnification puts you in a place to where you can bring somebody else into a place that they wouldn't normally qualify for. Praise God. Oh God. Oh God, he just said this. That is the power of your influence. Because you're being magnified, magnification brings influence. That's the power of, of your, because you're, 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 you're being magnified, that means your influence is magnified. And that's the power of your influence. So what will happen is, your influence will not only open doors for you, God help me, but it'll open doors for somebody else. God, are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? And the cycle continues. And the cycle continues. Oh, God. Now, now we know previously, now he gave me this one, and I had to go back, I had to go say, Lord, are you, are you, you are, this is what you're saying? Yes. He said, now, I want y'all to remember, remember when we were talking about maturation, he said the ability to have big vision instead of small sight. You all remember that? When he said uh, the ability to have big vision instead of small sight. But guess what he told me in magnification? Small insight, but big in vision. God Almighty, small insight, but big in vision. God, uh, uh, magnification, man, magnification. He says small insight, but big in vision. God, small insight, but big in vision. This is what magnification, this is why your mind is being is, is stretched. Your mind is being stretched. Your, your capacity is being, God, what's going on? You're in a, some, some, oh God, I hear you. Are uh, you in a place of, of intense frustration? God, what in the world is going on? What's happening? He said, watch this. I'm stretching your mind. I'm stretching your spirit. I, I am literally stretching you. And it's causing and it's hurting. Because you're like, man, God, what, what is that? I, I can literally see you holding your head like this. I can literally see you holding your head like this. And you're like, God, what is happening? What is going on? He said, I'm stretching you. As the magnification of expansion, that means I got to stretch you. I got to stretch you. Some of y'all are walking into the anointing. Oh, God, and you don't get how big this thing is. And the Lord said, I'm stretching you. Watch this. Oh, God, he just gave me this. Watch this. He just gave me this. I'm stretching you, oh, God, oh, God, to fit the blueprint. <laughs> you know how... Um, uh, you can 
take a, I used to work for Little Caesars Pizza years ago, years ago, back in 19, I think it was 85, somewhere. I worked for Little Caesars Pizza and they had a large pizza pan, but the dough didn't fit the pizza pan. It said large, but when I put it in the pan, it didn't fit the parameters of the pan. But in order for, watch this, in order for that thing to reach its capacity, what it was sectioned to do, it had to be stretched. And once that dough was stretched, it fit the large pan. But without it being stretched, it just sat there like a lump. Oh God, I'm helping somebody here. God Almighty, I'm helping you. So what's happening is, watch this. God say, I'm stretching you to fit the blueprint. God Almighty. I'm stretching you to me to, to reach this level of, of magnification. I'm straight everybody. I wish somebody type this in. I'm being stretched. I'm being stretched. I'm being stretched. I'm be, I, it hurts. It's painful. I'm be, I don't understand it. But the Lord said, I'm stretching you. I'm stretching you to fit. Oh God. I'm stretching you to fit the blueprint that I fashioned. I'm stretching you to, to fit it. God, help us tonight. Help us, God. I'm stretching you, overseer. He told me, son, I'm stretching you. I'm stretching you to fit. I'm stretching you to fit the next, the next, the next, the next, God. He said, I'm stretching you to fit the next, God Almighty. Oh, God, I'm being stretched. You are being stretched. Oh, magnification. Magnification. Are you hearing me? Watch this. Here it is. Here it is. Here's another one he gave me. You are being seen through a magnifying glass. He said, I, you are being seen through a magnified glass. What does that mean? Small to the, nat to the natural, but magnified in the spirit. <laughs> Did y'all hear that? You are being seen through a magnified glass. This is what's happening. People are looking at you and they see small. They see smallness. But when they see you through that magnifying glass, God said it's triple the size. <laughs> it's being it's magnified. But when they take it down, they just see you small. They just see you as no threat. They just see you as a nobody. But when they put the magnifying glass on, they're like, whoa, I didn't know. <laughs> God, I feel you. Oh, God. I didn't know. I didn't even. That's why some people underestimated you. Some people underestimated you, and they didn't even see you coming. They were looking for something else. They were looking for something over there. Because they didn't even see you as a threat. They didn't even see you coming. That you were you were not even on their radar. And out of nowhere, bam, God said, that's what's happening. Uh -huh. They don't even see you coming. They don't even see you. You're not even on the radar. But God said, watch this. There's an out of nowhere season that's about to, that's about to hit your life. Huh. There's an out of nowhere season that's about to hit your life. Come out of my shit. Woo, came out. Yeah, boy, say, uh, oh, I feel the anointing. There is an out of nowhere season. Oh, people not even going to see it coming. God, no matter what, you a millionaire? Yes, literally. Oh, there's an out of nowhere season that is coming in this year as we are in the year of recovery. He said there's a season. There are four seasons. He said one of those seasons is an out of nowhere uh, uh, season. You're getting ready to enter into an out of nowhere season. This thing just going to hit out of nowhere. That's why the enemy trying to get us to shift out of position. Get out of alignment. Get out of place. Because he understands that the momentum in the spirit, which we cannot see, we can sense it, but we can't see it. Where he can see it and sense it. So watch this. He can see the momentum building because he knows there's nothing that he can do to stop it. Why? Because it's coming from God. So what he is doing is using his weapons. His weapons is based upon natural, the natural person. So he'll frustrate you, aggravate you, agitate you, do all of these things to get you to shift and move out of position because that's the only way that it won't happen. I wish somebody would type this in. I know I said it last week, but I'm going to say it again. Stay in position. God Almighty. 
Stay in position, God, because you're about to enter into a season of out of nowhere, God Almighty. Out of nowhere, 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 out of nowhere. This thing is about to happen. Oh, God. Oh, this thing is about to happen out of nowhere, out of nowhere, out of nowhere. You're about to walk into an out of nowhere season. It's going to even blow your mind. It, you know, God said, that's some stuff I hadn't even told you. That's some stuff I hadn't even said to you. That's some stuff I hadn't even released to you. That's why I says, watch this. Uh, it's singularly abundant above all that you can ask or think. He said, you can't even think about this thing right here. You can't even fantasize, fantasize it in your mind. You can't even fathom in your mind this thing. He said, because there, your thoughts are not even big enough to see this thing that's coming. Oh, God. Are oh, y'all hearing me? This thing is about to hit your house. Some of y'all don't, oh, God. Oh man, we might not make it to Logos tonight because I'm flowing in such a place of rhema. Watch this. The Lord said, watch this. In this right now, what you don't understand what's happening is this. You are breaking generational curses over your family. You're breaking generational curses that's been gone a long time ago and, uh, and you are the chosen one. You are breaking cycles. Oh God, you are breaking. Oh God, oh my God. watch this. He said, you are breaking spells. You are breaking hexes. You are breaking curses and you are breaking cycles. Each one is different. You are breaking spells. You are breaking hexes. You are breaking curses and you are breaking cycles. Each one of those are different. But God say you are the one that's breaking it. You are the one that was chosen. You are the one that's doing it. That's why it's crazy right now. That's why the attack is so crazy right now. You can't get out of position. Oh, God. Magnification. God Almighty. I feel you. Oh, magnification. Huh. Watch this. Here's the next one. He said, caution. Danger. Danger. He said, danger. Understand. As you are going through magnification, God Almighty, here it is. Everything is being magnified. The good and the bad. This is why we got to be careful because there's also the other side of the magnification. He said, watch this. We've got to be in a place where we help each other. We help each other. No, hey, hey, go, hey, listen, come on, come on, hold it together. I know you, I know you, I know you're struggling. I know you're going through this, but no, hold it together. And we've got to be that accountability partner for each other. We've got to be the one that, that the strong battle infirmity of the week. Hey, listen, I got you right now. I got you. I know you're struggling right here. So I got you. I got you because he said magnification is also good. But it also has the other side. Can you handle someone else's magnified issue? God, everybody, oh God. God said, I'm specifically placing people around you that can handle your magnified issue. Because see, normally when you're not under the magnified glass, it don't come out. But watch this. When you put a magnified glass, you know, the, the funny thing is you can take a piece of material. You can take a piece of material. Looking at it, this napkin, it looks white. It looks clean. But when magnification hits it, you can see what the natural eye would normally see, wouldn't normally see. But just looking at it, it looks, oh God, it looks clean. It looks white. But when the magnifier gets there, it, it shows all of the dirt, all of the wrinkles, all of the spots and all of that stuff. And God said, I'm anointing specific people. Because you got to understand that there are people that's been assigned and anointed in your life to help you go through this magnification. Because everybody is not anointed to handle your magnification. Everybody can't handle it. Mm -mm. Everybody can't handle it. Are you hearing me? So the Lord said, danger, caution, understand. Yes, we're celebrating magnification. But understand this. Everything is also magnified. <laughs> Yo, the good 
and the bad. Are you hearing me? You've been anointed to handle someone else's bad. Whereas somebody else can handle it. It would destroy them. Are you hearing me? It would literally destroy them. Are you hearing me? God Almighty. Why do you think? God, thank you for the revelation. When Jesus went up to the mountain, <laughs> he did not take all of the disciples. He only took three. Peter, James, and John. Why? <laughs> Everybody can't handle your transfiguration. God Almighty. Everybody can't handle you trans. Because you remember when, it, when Jesus took them up on the mountain, he transfigured right there in front of them. He said, everybody's not anointed enough to handle your transfiguration. So I can't take all of you up on top of the mountain. I can only take those that are specifically assigned to handle my transfiguration. God. And right there before their eyes, Jesus transfigured. He transformed right before them, God. <laughs> Man, it's, it's, rough. It's, it's rough. Here's another one. God, here's another one. Here it is. God. Go ahead and put those scriptures up there on the screen because I don't think we're going to finish this. Now, as God has said, caution, danger. Understand, everything is magnified, both your good and your bad, your accomplishments and your struggles. He said this, pray for the discernment of magnification. There is a specific discernment that you got to have for this magnification. If not, he said, if you don't pray for the discernment of magnification, you will see things incorrectly, thus handling things incorrectly, thus angering God. God Almighty, are y'all hearing me? He said this, you're being magnified, your magnification. You've got to pray for the discernment of magnification. Pray for the God, give us the discernment of this level of magnification so that we will see things correctly. Because if not, if you don't pray for the discernment of your magnification, you will see things incorrectly, which thus will cause you to handle things incorrectly, which will thus anger God. And then God will say, oh, they ain't ready. They're not ready. Mm. And then it'll take you back into another season of frustration because you'll wonder what is going on, what's happening, because you didn't pray for the discernment of magnification, which means that you were, mm, you're in a whole other place, but you're looking through the eyes of where you used to be. God Almighty, you're in a whole other place, but you're looking through the eyes of where you used to be. So therefore, you're seeing through the eyes of where you used to be, which means you're seeing things incorrectly, which means then you handle things incorrectly. And then God said, now, man, God Almighty, are y'all hearing me? Not only that, last one, last one, last one, last one. He said, not only do you need to pray for the discernment of magnification, he said, God I, he hit me with this one. Pray for the maturity of magnification. Operating in magnification with an unmagnified maturity can cause much destruction. You up here, God is magnifying you and bringing you before people. But your maturity don't match your magnification. So then now, you're in this level of magnification, but your maturity is in an unmagnified level, and that can cause much destruction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It can cause, says the Lord, much destruction. God I pray for maturity for the magnification. God, give us the maturity for the magnification. Give us the maturity for the magn magn uh, magnification. Give it to us, God. Give us the discernment for this magnification and give us the maturity for this magnification because there's a certain level of maturity that we got to have on this level. 
If we enter into a season of out of nowhere, there's a level of discernment and maturity that we've got to have in operating out of a place, a season of out of nowhere. Are you hearing me? Yes, God. Let's go. Now, we better get a couple of scriptures in. Let's go to Genesis. I want to show you. I want to at least give you some logos so nobody can't say, well, he didn't do nothing, but he didn't give us no word. He just gave us a rhema. Let's go. Uh, Genesis uh, chapter 35, and you'll see all the scriptures there on your screen. You'll see all the scriptures there on your screen. All the scriptures, all the scriptures are right there on your screen. Let's go. Genesis chapter 37. Verses 5 through 11. We're going to get a little bit, a little of this about magnification. Let me show you how powerful this is. This is. Genesis 37, 5 through 11. Now Joseph dreamed a dream and he told it to his brothers and they hated him even more. Hmm. Look at that. This is what happens when you don't have the maturity for the magnification. Joseph told his dreams. To people, his brothers, that could not handle it. They couldn't handle it. They they were, see some stuff, some people can't handle. I don't care how close you are. Are you hearing me? His brother, these were his brothers. They could not handle the magnification of what God was getting ready to do in Joseph's life, it will cause unnecessary warfare. Read. So he said to them, please listen to the details of this dream, which I have dreamed. We brothers were binding sheaves of grain stalks in the field, and lo, my sheaf suddenly got up and stood upright and remained standing. And behold, your sheaves stood all around my sheaf and bowed down in respect. His brother said to him, are you actually going to reign over us? Are you really going to rule and govern us you as your that? subjects? You see that? Read. So they hated him even more. They did what? Hated him even they more. They hated him even more. You've got to have the maturity to match this magnification. Joseph should have kept that to himself. You can't tell whether everybody's not excited about what God is doing in your life. Everybody's not excited about what God is showing you. Everybody's not excited, don't have the maturity to handle this type of magnification, this out of nowhere. Everybody does not have the maturity to handle that. Some stuff that God, uh, 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 where he's saying he's taking you and showing you what he's getting ready to do in your life, you got to have discernment and maturity. Because if not, his brothers were angry at him. They became out of no out of nowhere. They didn't have no problem with Joseph until he started this. They didn't have no problem with him until he started talking about his magnification. Because remember, jo let me show you. Joseph, he had found favor with his daddy because he was birthed, he was birthed to his daddy in old age. So out of all his brothers. He had that he had that special little place with with his daddy because he was birthed out of old age. Go and read it. Read. So they hated him even more for telling them about his dreams and for his arrogant words. But Joseph dreamed still another dream and told it to his brothers as well. Oh, guess look at that. He didn't just dream it one time. He didn't just tell it one time. He told them, Joseph, try not you mean to tell me. Now look at here, Joseph. You're not. God is, he, he's taking you through the process of, I'm showing you where I'm taking you, Joseph. I'm showing you where I'm taking you. I'm showing you where the end result is. See, God is so funny. God is funny. Let me tell you what God will do. God will show you the ending at the beginning. He'll show you the end of a thing at the beginning. Like, God, why you do that? Look, look at this. No, nothing was going on with Joseph. I was like, God showing Joseph the end. At the beginning. And, and, and see, we celebrate on that. But then there's that process of getting there. God showed Joseph the end. Oh, he was bowing down and he was the read. He said, see here, I have again dreamed a dream. And lo, this time I said, I saw 11 stars and the sun and the moon bowed down in respect to me. 
He, he told it to his father as well and as to his brothers, but his father rebuked him and said to him in disbelief, what is the meaning of this dream that you have dreamed? Shall I and your mother and your brothers actually come to bow down to the ground in respect before you? Joseph's brothers were envious and jealous of him, but his father kept the words of Joseph in mind, wondering about their meaning. <laughs> well, okay, so stay, stay in uh, Genesis. Jump over two chapters to chapter 39. Go to chapter 39, Genesis chapter. We're dealing with Joseph right now. Genesis chapter 39, verses 1 through 5. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an Egyptian officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the royal guard, brought him from the Ish bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. The Lord said was with Joseph and he The Lord was what? With Joseph. Joseph going to jail. But he's going through his magnification. What he dreamed now was being had been activated. Now he's going through his magnification. Watch this. No matter where you are, can't nobody put your light out. Only person that can put your light out is you. That's why the Lord said you got to stay humble. Because watch this. Joseph was in jail. He's in jail now. He's now going to part of the magnification process. But let me show you what happened. Read. And Joseph, uh, even though a slave, became a successful and prosperous man. <laughs> even though was a slave, he became a successful, prosperous man. Even though he was in bondage, even though he was shackled down, even though he was in a cell, even though he was incarcerated, even though he was in chains, even though he was in bondage, the Bible says he was still successful. The process of ma man, magnification, God is this, oh, this is nothing but a part of the process. Of getting what we saw at the beginning, which was the end. Read. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Now his master saw that the Lord was with him. And his, see, that's what I said. Remember, remember, Joseph is battling he in jail. That's why, remember, we said, let others see your magnification. Stay humble. So Joseph's still tripping out. Man, I can't believe my brothers did this to me. I can't believe I'm in jail. So God allowed that situation to continue so Joseph wouldn't see what other people were seeing so that God could get the glorification. Notice this what happened. Joseph didn't see that Joseph was still wrestling about, I can't believe my brothers did this to me. I can't believe they just put me in a pit. I can't believe that now I'm in a jail. That's what Joseph was wrestling with. That's what Joseph was wrestling. He didn't see how grand he was. He didn't see it. He just knew that, you know, he, I'm in jail. I mean, I'm here with folks. I'm, I'm in a place that I didn't put my place, I didn't put myself in. I'm in a place because of somebody else. Are oh, y'all hearing me? Yeah, I'm in a, now, man, come on here. And then look what happened. Read. And what happened? And, and the master what? Saw that the Lord was with him. And the master saw that the Lord was with him. And that the Lord caused all that he did to prosper and succeed. And that the, the, here's a man that was not even, for the lack of a better word, a believer. He wasn't a Christian. He didn't believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He didn't know nothing about no matter of fact, this man was, was an idolater. He, he believed he worshiped idols. But he he recognized that everything he had was blessed because of Joseph's magnification. He had enough sense to recognize, I ain't did this on my own. Uh -uh. <laughs> oh, no, because before you got here, Joseph, I didn't have none of this. Mm -mm. I didn't have this, Joseph. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. But since you've been here, Joseph, man, I don't come up. Read. Hey, you don't believe? Read some more. So Joseph pleased Potiphar and found favor in his sight, and he served him as his personal servant. He made Joseph overseer over his house. Okay, I want you all to see this. I want you to see this. Look at the position. Then I said magnification position you in places that you wouldn't normally qualify for. Joseph wouldn't qualify to be no overseer over his house. He's a prisoner. He's locked up with felons, murderers, thieves. So 
So Joseph's still wrestling. My brothers did this to me. I'm in jail. But this is what happens. Watch this. His magnification was positioning him in a place that he wouldn't know. He didn't qualify for that. You're not even from the same uh, the same belief system as Potiphar. But what was happening? Read that again. So Joseph pleased Potiphar and found favor in his sight, and he served him as his personal servant. He made Joseph overseer over his house, and he put all that he owned in Joseph's charge. He put all that he owned in Joseph's charge. His mag Joseph's magnification positioned him in a place that he wouldn't normally qualify for. He was a prisoner. Well, praise the Lord. It's 8 o'clock. I know, I know. I, I hear y'all, man, because it was about to get deep. Y'all see the scriptures. Um, y'all see those scriptures there. You see those scriptures. I want y'all to go read those scriptures. Read them, oh, man. We're talking about magnification. Y'all being magnified. Your, God is saying, your magnification is my glorification. Yeah, so don't, don't, don't listen, man. Don't blow it. Don't get out of position. Don't, don't stay in position. Do not blow it. Stay in position. Hallelujah. Hey, listen, if this word blessed you tonight, listen, I want you all to uh, sow a seed into this anointing. Sow a seed into this anointing. Sow a seed into this anointing. Listen, sow a seed into the, our cash app identifier. It's dollar sign new life, N-E-W-L-I-F-E. -E, dollar sign new life, I-N-T-L. You'll see it down the screen. Dollar sign new life I N T L. Sow a seed into this word. If this, if you got any negative, if it hit you, if it blessed you, sow a seed. Listen, if somebody on here you're not saved and you want to be saved, God, this is what it's all about. If you're on here you're not saved and you want to be saved, it's simple. The Bible says, "Thy wit confess um, thy mouth." He said, ten more minutes." Now I can't give you ten more minutes. Come on, come on Sunday, come to church Sunday. If thou wit confess with thy mouth. And believe in our heart that the Lord Jesus was raised from the dead. He said this, uh, you shall be saved. So if you did that tonight, I want you to know that you're, you're saved. Now, it doesn't stop there. You need the Holy Ghost. Yes, you need the Holy Ghost. That's your power. I pray now that anyone that's listened to my voice as the apostles prayed. I pray the prayer that they prayed. Lord, I pray that these receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, it doesn't stop right there. Here's, the, here's something very important that a lot of people live, leave out. You need covering. You need covering. You need to be in a place where you can submit to. Uh, yes, you need to be in a place where you can submit. You need covering. You need a shepherd. You need to be in a place where you can grow, a place where you can be free, and a place where the word is coming forth. You need covering. You're just out there wondering. Mm -mm. I'm telling you, a sheep can't fight a lion. A sheep can't fight a wolf. You don't, a sheep don't know how to fight a wolf. But you need a shepherd. So I invite you, hey, this is, new life is a great place for you. Just type in, I want to connect. I want to connect and someone will get back with you. Our elder new members, elder uh, uh, Patricia Harris, you will make sure she'll get back in contact with you. But you just you got, you got to now just type in, I want to connect. Hey, listen, I thank you all for being with us. Um, we'll be back uh, this Sunday at 1015 a.m. Our address is 1985 Vineville Avenue, New Life International Ministries. We're just up past Fountain Car Wash there on the right in the old Scottish Rite building. Hey, because we know at New Life, it's not just church. It's an experience. Thank you all for tuning in tonight. Be blessed.